old guys shouldn't marry young Filipinas. Now this is an interesting one because I actually have a relative that's late 50s, early 60s, um, whose girlfriend wife is now 24. Um, when I say relative, this on my wife's side, they're actually both Filipinos. And the reason this is sort of mixed in is because some people will go, oh, well, it's cultural. I would say it's nothing to do with culture. I think it's more to do with the fact that it's people just don't even recognize it as an issue. Um, they just look past it. You may get people ask you, why, you know, if you're a classmate, why is such and such with this old guy? Um, but it's more to do with the fact that that's their friend and they're just wondering that that seems a little bit odd but beyond that nobody cares but from a western perspective it's often seen as wrong but i would actually ask the question if you're physically fit because somebody actually mentioned oh well they're on death's door a lot of these guys are not on death's door they're actually fitter than a lot of younger guys that are at the mcdonald's age um the they exercise regularly. They do a lot more walking than a lot of other people do. Um, a lot of them are ex-services, so they're used to keep looking after themselves. The reality is they're in pretty good shape. The majority of the guys I know are very, very healthy. Um, doesn't mean that their heart won't conk out um, because they're 85 or whatever. It's because they've physically fit that it's going to stop them dying no of course not but I would say in their 60s they're probably their fitness level will be better than a lot of people of my generation in the same age um, because the diets and stuff that we have aren't as good um, yeah so I would say that they've probably got 20 years in them maybe more of their lucky. So the average person is gonna have 20 years with their wife. Now I would say, if you look at it from the perspective of the average marriage, let's say, let's, I, don't know, I should have reviewed this, average marriage lifespan of the UK. We have the power of the internet and time to drink tea. How long does an average marriage last in the world? Uh, I do love it when they go round and round and don't actually... Okay, the average marriage length in the UK is actually 11 years. So you've got 20 years out of this older guy. You know, a minimum of 10 most of the time. And I, I'm sorry if I actually sound <laughs> like I'm trading in an old car here. But it's more to do with the fact I'm trying to point out that the average marriage lasts about 11 years and the average guy is going to last 10 to 20 years. So that already puts them above the average marriage expectancy, which means that their relationship from that perspective shows that it's likely to last longer. Strange, isn't it? Why would it last longer in the Philippines than it would in the West? Well, the first thing is you've got this older guy where all the money's coming from him and a, a partner. Um, she is sort of bound to him in many ways financially and he is bound to her relationship-wise. So somewhere in the middle, they meet because they both have things that they rely on the other for. It becomes a relationship, it becomes a marriage. Is it a marriage of convenience would be the next question. I would say to a point, but I would say that if you're with somebody for 10, 20 years, then your relationship develops. If it doesn't, then there's probably something severely wrong with one of you or both of you. Um, because the worst case scenario, you would have the, um, oh, what's that effect with the, when you're with terrorists, uh, the Munich effect, I think it's called, isn't it? Munich effect. I'm just going to talk. So professional today. <coughs> it was basically to do with the Munich Stadium, I think it was. Yeah, it was to do with the the Munich massacre for the Olympics. 
competing for this time anyway, because the Olympics are currently ongoing. Um, but the, the point is, is the fact that these people had, with spending so much time with their captives, that it become the Munich effect. But don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that this is some sort of captive <laughs> scenario. I'm saying that the fact is that you spend more time, even with the worst person, a relationship does develop. But I would say also that most of the guys I've met are okay. Um, I'd say there's more issues with people of a younger age group. Um, there's a lot of people that I've seen with mental issues that are much, much younger. Um, be it from whatever reasons, their upbringing, or be it from psychological issues relating to Iraq, etc. Um, they are more difficult to deal with in a relationship than a guy that is in his 60s and just enjoying life, likes long walks and watching TV and not really bothering anybody. Um, so from my view, I have no issue with somebody older marrying somebody younger um, because over that time a relationship develops. I would say it's probably got more survival chance than a lot of relationships in the West because in the West it's all about the money um, as such you get the the female often with her money and the guy with his, his money um, that is also seen as her money or our money where the guy is sort of giving up more all the time does he have to do that? I would say it's very difficult in the West because everything's set up in such a strange scenario. Um, but in the Philippines, you can walk out of the relationship and it's very difficult for somebody to chase you. This is why the relationships bond a lot better. But it's also about the fact that the marriage is more in a traditional sense. It, um, because you've got the guy that's come from a traditional marriage sense because that's his generation. You've got a Filipina that has come from a culture of a Catholic environment that promotes marriage. So you've got the blend of people that actually have a real marriage. In the West, it's often like having a ring on the finger, like the old Beyonce song. That's about as shallow as it goes. It's often not seen to the same depth. Myself, I am not religious, but the thing is I signed a marriage contract. A contract to me is binding um, because my word is my bond, but I got married because it makes my wife happy. It doesn't mean anything to me. Um, from a contractual sense, it means a lot. Um, but also, if we do a blessing of our marriage again, which is very likely, um, it's because it makes my wife happy. Um, doesn't make me happy. It, I can't see things from the religious context. It, religion doesn't mean a thing to me. Um, I don't have that, I feel all fuzzy and warm inside because I have Jesus or whatever. I don't have any of that. I don't understand it. They, for me, it just doesn't mean anything. Um, but the, the whole point here is, I have no issue with these guys going to the Philippines and get married and settle down. They're enjoying their lives. They're in good health. They're happy. The girl's happy. The girl's financially much, much better off than she would be if she worked for the next 30 years. She may even actually be better educated and stuff because a lot of these guys put their partners through education and things. So for somebody to sit there and criticize an environment they neither have visited or understand, uh, it's very difficult to judge. I would say spend some time there before judging people so quickly. I'd also say that in your 60s or whatever, you don't want a Western wife because you're risking losing everything you've got left if you come out of a previous relationship. Um, but also you're risking the fact that if you manage to maintain all your wealth up until that period of time, losing it lock, stock and barrel to a Western partner if it doesn't work out after 12 months or whatever. In the Philippines, at least, none of those things exist. It's not an issue. You don't have to buy a house. You don't have to... Rent's cheap, etc. Your cost of living's cheap. You can be much happier without any of that stress. Thanks for watching.